technology tip that I learned from our tech director was to put that, I put it on every slide, and so you can access those. There are links uh, throughout the slide deck that if you need to access and, and play around and look at some of the stuff I have linked there while I'm talking, please feel free. And my Twitter handle is probably the best way to contact me if, if you need to. Uh, I am going to give this presentation of professional de development delivery from the perspective of um, the district, the system of the entire district, um, and how it all has fit together for us in our district. Uh, there were some challenges along the way, some fail forwards, and also some successes that I'll share as I move along through this. So it may seem fragmented at times, but I promise you it all fits uh, together. First off, I'd like to get kind of an idea who you all are. How many K-12 teachers? Okay, technology coaches. And those have different names, I'm sure. Um, administrators, higher level. Wow, so quite a mix, that's, that's excellent, okay. Well, I'm gonna use some metaphors to start off with, and the first one is this bridge. And I'm gonna move from district vision all the way over to where our building administration fits into this PD delivery model and how Canvas has helped to facilitate all of that. Our district vision, uh, our superintendent started two years ago in, in his position as the superintendent and he wanted something very simple. And in all my years of teaching, I've never really like known the district vision by heart and could just tell you this is what we do and everything goes. But his, that he came up with, and he had a whole group of community and teachers and everybody that, that worked on this, was inspire innovation, empower students. And it was that simple, four words. And of course in Colorado we have to add on that piece in a safe environment for students, which is very important. And, uh, but the, those first four words are, are the key to all of this, and so everything that you see will work towards that vision. Our technology director always starts every presentation off with this piece, and, and I've learned to do it because there's always questions around it. There's a three-legged stool metaphor that one of your legs needs to be your devices, one of them is your infrastructure, and the third one is your people that support both of those. Uh, the people that support both the infrastructure, and then, as you're gonna learn, that what I do is support the PD and the devices for the teachers. All of this began, and, and the catalyst for our change, and another metaphor, um, a cloud with silver lining. The cloud was basically, our district had to do online testing, as the whole state did, and we had to come up with enough devices to do this. As the district looked at different devices, Chromebooks were the go-to device, and I wasn't part of this piece, I was still a, an educational technology coach in a classroom, but the people in charge decided that we don't wanna keep these devices in a warehouse and we're gonna just pull them out for testing, let's get them out, get them out there in the classrooms. And this worked really good, because about five years ago in our district, they did a survey to see if we wanted to go for a mill levy or, or a bond and, and see if we could get, go one to one, because the larger dis districts around us were doing that. And it came back in the survey pretty unfavorable. I think about 40% were on board with doing something like that. And so a couple years later, um, this came about and it also was the catalyst for kind of starting that one to one idea in our classrooms and people starting to buy in. So this also proves you can make an acronym out of just about anything. <laughs> and educators are probably pretty good at that. So let me give you just a quick background of, of that program and what the PD looked like for that. It was a three day initial training with some coursework. Uh, the teachers had weekly reflections and we started to have some just-in-time coaching support. We, didn't, we had technology teachers that were in a lab that started going out and taking care of some of this. Um, they had quarterly large group celebrations and this is where they could share and collaborate and support each other. Um, and we started looking at intentional instruction and what does that look like with these devices. Sam R was a piece of that to begin with. Most of this was large group trainings that we did. 
um, personalized, maybe a little bit for their areas. They'd have breakout groups in elementary, secondary, and talk about, okay, how are we gonna manage these devices, and what are some apps that work for our grade level students, and how do we vet those? And I should also mention that about this same time, our superintendent um, brought in this Patterson group to do a strat op. It's the same process that Otterbox uses in uh, figuring out how they're gonna operate. What's important to, to be addressing? What are the initiatives we should be working on instead of, it's a way of controlling that and having a controlled discussion around that. And things that bubbled at the top were professional development in our district and how that worked. I should say also, this also sparked the uh, district vision that we had uh, that was short. Okay, let me go to the district coaches um, and how that piece takes that district vision and moves it forward a little bit. Now you have an idea of what the people look like that I work with. That's my boss. And Sheila Bowman is the TOSA and technology coach that works mostly with elementary. And she was on board first with this when I was talking earlier, the people, the powers that be that made those decisions around silver lining. That's where all that came from. I was brought in just a few years ago uh, to, to take over uh, some of that secondary piece that Sheila was starting to get overwhelmed because the devices and the numbers kept growing in our district. And Sheila is always chanting, personalized PD, save the day. And so I put that up here because we've moved from looking at tools and systems, uh, it's still a piece of it, but we don't do trainings just around something like Canvas or Google Suite, it's around how do we change our pedagogy to teach with these devices and the apps fit into that very nicely. Um, and so we look at the pedagogy and management, well, management of the devices is another big piece also. Um, but we also, in our roles, we promote collaborative coaching, digital content design, we're trying to awaken the inner leader and get more of a teacher-led uh, structure going um, with, with spreading the word and building capacity. And all of that has basically empowered our student learning. These are our guiding practices. I mentioned Sam R. that's what we began with. It's expanded from there, we have quite a few. And in our trainings that we're gonna be doing with new teachers coming up here in just a couple days, we're on a construction schedule in our district. So our new teachers actually reported today, and that's part of the reason why those two colleagues aren't with me. But uh, they will be researching and developing all this themselves. Sheila and I used to stand up at the front and talk about SAMR and just spew it out to them, and, and there was a front of the room, but now, the front of the room's disappeared. They're working in groups. They're researching all this themselves. And that was really helped in our PD delivery for the buy-in. Which of these works best for them? How do I go about using these tools to get this in there and shift my pedagogy? Um, that link up there will get you to our website. It has a lot of this. This is the website we'll be using with new teachers starting tomorrow. And this was a course training um, housed in Canvas, everything we do basically is housed in Canvas. We try to model that. Um, we try to model all of these things, SAMR, the ISTE standards for students, everything. Uh, it's very intentional how we model this for our teachers as they take these trainings. Um, and we, we have some book studies that they'll do, all the way down to um, that Makerspace field trip. Our public library has a great partnership with our district. They bring Ozobots, Spheros, um, makerspace items into our buildings. You can sign up for this in our district. And one of our sessions was to take them to, to that library. And this was just a teacher training that was foundational. A lot of these teachers are gonna be getting a cart next year. And so they were learning and experiencing all this hands-on stuff from our, and, and it's amazing, We're just letting them get in there, play with it, reflect on it, share out a little bit about what they got from that is so much better than just us talking to them and telling them this is available and da 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 da. That experience is huge, and we're hoping to take some of our new teachers there on Tuesday. So the evolution, the continuation of building capacity, that purchase of Canvas was huge for us. Um, it has allowed us to develop a point system, which I've heard 
a lot about badging and everything as I've gone through sessions here this week and got a lot of great ideas uh, for adding to this. That just-in-time support is continuing to build that capacity. And of course, we're using badges for celebration, just like many of, of you probably are. How many are, of you are using badges? Or OK, awesome. Um, we still do face-to-face. -face, um, we still do online. But a lot of this is blended now. And uh, those badges have become kind of a symbol. Uh, let me get you to, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. No, nope, maybe not. There's a picture later on of a teacher very proud of her badges. And uh, I just want to say that our badges, we have a, we, we've got a button maker, our technology director. And so we have a secretary who will sit there and make our badges. We get all excited about them that they can pin on their lanyards and you'll see a picture of her. But we also have the digital ones. We haven't used Badger or anything like that um, uh, or Canva badges. But what we do is we just create it. And then when they complete the training, we just email it to them and they can use it. We haven't, anybody, haven't had anybody stealing or anything like that, <laughs> the badges. It just doesn't go there. Um, but for the most part, teachers really like that. Uh, we call our badging type of professional development delivery the transformational teaching and learning in the digital classroom is the title of it. We've learned to kind of disguise our titles. Um, a lot of teachers will go, oh, that's just kind of a bandwagon badging, badging right now. And same with like coding. Sometimes there's a fear. So with coding, we'll like computer systems, uh, utilizing computer systems in your classroom for learning. And so the teachers kind of like, Oh, that doesn't sound too crazy. I can do that. OK, this is a screenshot. We actually created this in a Google Doc. And then we embed that into Canvas. And that way, it can be collaborative even when we always are changing things and mixing it up. Uh, we try to spring EdCamp online to awaken the inner leader in some of our teachers that have been doing one-to-one -one for a couple of years now to get the word out there. And we just set up a spreadsheet. And the teachers who wanted to sign up signed up. And they put in a link then to their online piece. The reason we had had, other, had regular ad camps face to face. But the reason we did this is we had some teachers in, in our feedback survey saying, I really wanted to attend an, an ad camp. But I just don't have the time. I have kids. I've got other things going on with my family, um, all these soccer practices and football practices and everything going on. And so they were able to do that on their own time. And we ran it just like one week. We got this idea from Matt Miller. Anybody here familiar with Matt Miller and digital textbook view? OK. He had done a summit. And he made it one week over a Christmas break. And you could go in and watch his videos and, and write reflections. And so we set it up the same way. And surprisingly, it worked out pretty well. Other ways that our inner leader uh, has been awoken, this district presenter badge, uh, teachers have jumped in on that. And you'll see at the building level, this is something that's been promoted by our building coaches at that level. And then we also have, we're lucky, uh, our northern Colorado school districts have come together to form their own uh, conference. It's called Super Connected. And so those districts will get together, and teachers can present at that. And so it's all teacher-led, and these are all opportunities. It's what we want them to do, so we're rewarding them with points towards. Uh, we have continuing education credits. Each point basically adds to an hour of a continuing education uh, unit. And then our district has, and I know every district's a little different, uh, on the salary schedule, every 10 district credits you can move across. And so each of these one points, if you get 15 points, that's one credit. And then they could apply for moving across the salary schedule when they have 10 of those district credits. And so this is another way to incentivize that for teachers. We still have Canvas badges in there. Um, we did a soft rollout of Canvas in, in a January, come if you want training, and most of our one-to-one -one teachers that were already on board, they were looking for something more robust than Google Classroom. Not everybody, but we still had a few on uh, Google Classroom. 
but especially the secondary really ate this up and we have a lot of them that are still continuing on their own when they're ready for it. Jump in, they can personalize it and, and use it the way that they need it. Uh, we also left uh, it open. Uh, this second one here, teachers can create their own idea. Maybe we don't have a badge um, for what you're doing, but you feel it's important. It's something that is innovative and goes towards our district vision. Submit the idea to us, and we'll take a look at it and say, you know what, that's a cool idea. And depending on the amount of time and the amount of uh, energy you put into that, we'll decide how many points that you can get from that. We've also been working with social media in our district. We added that one in there. It's kind of a fun one. So in total, last year was our first year with badging. We had 18 types of badges. 64% uh, of the total staff participated. And, and this was exciting. Not, that's, that includes, of course, the one-to-one -one that were already there. But a lot of staff that aren't one-to-one -one that, that'll go down and check out a cart. Some of our uh, schools have three or four carts in their media center that you can check out. And they were a part of that also. So we also have, I should mention, okay, so our district money purchased the uh, Chromebooks to, to start for testing. It grew from there. Uh, we, <laughs> our first year, we had to actually like put these Chromebook carts onto a truck and haul them from school to school so we could get the testing window done in time. I, I, okay, some other districts have done that. Uh, we have found that uh, now that we have m enough devices, we can leave them in the buildings, but we have a, what's called our Weld RE4 Educational Foundation, and they do fundraisers throughout the year, and then teachers can apply if they want to for any type of technology, but the dominant one seems to be Chromebook carts. And they have raised enough money to probably every year give at least another six to seven Chromebook carts out to buildings. And so we saw that starting to occur. They still take a foundational training, even though they get that car outside of the Silver Linings program, which was the dangling carrot at the time. Um, and so it's just kind of become this, if you want a cart, write a, a grant for it and see if you get it. Um, there's been other teachers that have gone outside of that. Uh, Otterbox had some grants that we had some teachers get also. Um, but we ended up with about 6.4 badges per person uh, district-wide. There's that picture that I was <laughs> going to show you. And so they'll stick these on lanyards, uh, bulletin boards. Um, some of them will print them off and put them on their windows, doors, different places. Some of them are putting them on their websites. So it's kind of exciting to see after one year, teachers kind of getting excited about professional development uh, because for a long time it kind of had been sit and get, um, you put it away when you were done and, and you didn't get that chance to reflect on it. You didn't have coaches that would give you that support just right there when you needed it and help you to continue working with what you had learned. We're continuing uh, to look at our uh, data throughout all of this. Um, this was our average participation uh, by certified staff and this was just our Silver Linings Foundation one-to-one -one carts in the room. Those aren't take home, by the way. Those are carts that stay in the room. Te uh, students pull them out when they need them. So our Learned Center offerings, basically we wanted to build a cult culture of teacher-led sharing. Um, we found that after the first couple years, those group ones, the um, sit and gets, for lack of a better term, just weren't enough, our survey started coming back negative. We don't want to do any more reflections, we got this. Some teachers were rock stars and were just way over here doing innovative teaching, and others were still on um, S, the substitution for Sam R. Uh, they just needed some more support and maybe a little bit of a, of a poke, I guess on Facebook they call it a poke. And so um, that is basically what we wanted to get out of this uh, with the badging pieces to change that around, let's personalize it, Teachers could come up with their own ideas besides ours. And our data has backed that up. We hope to continue seeing that grow. All right, moving on to the building coach uh, district level team. 
Um, our building coaches, this was actually born from, um, in our buildings, we had people in buildings already. Uh, we were a small district, we're about 6,000 students, 350 staff. Um, we're, we are probably, I don't know, on a good day, 60 minutes north of Denver on the interstate and uh, just to the east side of the interstate. And as we grow, I said we're on a construction schedule, it's because we're gonna have a new high school in a couple of years. Um, we were lucky enough that a bond did pass uh, in our community. And it's, it's gonna be interesting also. We're, we've been a one high school town forever. And so there's a lot of, are you gonna water down the football team and all, all that's going on along with this important stuff, right? Um, that's happening, but it's gonna be interesting. That high school's gonna be built with all of this in mind. And so it's gonna be very interesting when, when we go in to see uh, there's gonna be this innovation center and all these cool things that uh, will hopefully uh, all this will fit very nicely into. These teachers, or these coaches, I should say, originally were teachers or librarians. We call them ETIL teachers, educational technology slash information literacy. And we've always had one, maybe two, in each of our buildings. They ended up starting to transition to coaching when those one-to-one -one classrooms were like, I need some help with some of this. And we started to ask these questions. What we found was a lot of them felt like coaching is the way to go. We need to switch what we're doing. I don't mind not being in a lab. Uh, some of our labs have gone away. And even our librarians, they, they're on board with this. It, they, they get to get out there and do more with teachers. Um, we have done some training around this. The Art of Coaching was the first book study that we did uh, two years ago. We had just quarterly meetings to keep things consistent. Um, and this went okay. But what we learned the second year was, okay, these, <laughs> these people are on board. They, are, they wanted to be building coaches, but the teachers in the buildings weren't ready for that. They were confused by the change in the role. And so what we did was instead of just quarterly meetings, we created, let's meet weekly, and Mondays were the days they chose. So every morning on Mondays we meet, we share out, they call them I-team meetings. Um, they did another book study during that meeting on better conversations in the, in the spring with, by Jim Knight, very good uh, book for coaching. Uh, recently we took uh, quite a few of them that were able to make it in the summer. And last week we did a training around cognitive coaching. It's an eight day training, but we got two of them out of the way. There'll be two more in September, and it'll just move throughout the year. And so that, I think that really set in motion their idea of what coaching can be and how powerful of a tool and agent for change that is. So that was a screenshot of our first year. What we did was we put these into uh, Google Slides to do our notes, and everything was embedded in Canvas. Everything we do in our district pretty much is embedded in Canvas, as you're gonna see and it's accessible from there, all the links. Uh, these were, you know, we started to put in the ISTE coaching connection in our meetings and try to make that relevant. And so the intentional instruction and direction that we were taking, we just kept adding to it with our coaches also, and then they would take that out and spread it to their buildings. I think overall from all of this is we started building a coaching culture in our district. And that was what was missing. And I think that's what's gonna drive the understanding for our teachers and our buildings this year. Is these coaches will be able to move you from here to here in a very non-evaluative, non-intrusive, just straight up supportive fashion. And another piece, this was huge, I think, for our coaching staff to get first and our one-to-one our, our -one teachers were already there after a couple years, is the focus is not the technology. This was a George Kiros post on Twitter for his Innovator's Mindset book, but it's on the better ways of teaching and learning. And that goes along with our, I like that so much, because it goes along with our district vision, inspiring students, and I'm sorry, inspiring innovation, empowering students. Okay, moving to the 
uh, building PD committee. When I talked about the strat op process and how PD kind of bubbled up to the top of something that needed to be addressed to support all of these uh, trainings, one-to-one -one curriculum changes with one-to-one -one pedagogy shifts, um, the principals in our district took that and a lot of them formed a PD committee. It had been up to the principals for a long time. What are you gonna do for PD in three days? Uh, when you have a day, a day that you've got a plan here and turn that into the superintendent so that they know what you're gonna do. Uh, and there would be panic sometimes. <laughs> and sometimes they'd run out to teachers and ask, what should we do? It started to become last year a committee that could plan it out. They could get surveys, feedback from, from teachers about what do you need? What are we looking at? Um, the building coaches were involved with that. The district coaches were involved with that and our directors of curriculum all the way back to the district level uh, and directors of technology were involved with those committees. To provide time outside of a building PD day, some of our principals, and this was cool in a workshop, the pre-conference workshop for Instructure Con I went to, uh, they talked about principals can flip their staff meetings to provide more time for their staff. It takes them time to record this and pop it into Canvas for the teachers to view, but in the end run, then these committees that are running in the building have more time to meet, and they also have time to do some trainings or professional development, as opposed to listening to the principal up at the front talking. And that's no offense to principals that are maybe any principals in here, any that I've offended. <laughs> um, but yeah, that staff meeting change. And so a couple days before the actual time for the staff meeting, he would send this out. They could watch it. They could email if they had a question. They could ask him at the staff meeting if they had a question. And that totally changed uh, the culture of <laughs> staff meetings and how they're looked at. So I wanted to show you, these are screenshots from Canvas. He put all of his videos in there. Um, the, the technology coach at this particular building was very good with HTML and put in these accordion type of things that could, when you click on them, it goes and it expands. And so all the links to all of their uh, committees and notes to their committees. Um, if you take a screenshot of the, which I didn't have the foresight to do, of the modules, you can see each of the links. And so all the notes were there for everybody to see, totally transparent using Canvas. Uh, the, the PD committees would get together also and plan out like day-long PDs. And they were very intentional with how they did that. This was just one of the schedules at one of our buildings, but it was very typical to, of other buildings. Uh, from, the fee, from the survey on what do you want for PD, how do I edit videos? I want to use videos in my classroom. I want to get videos into uh, Canvas somehow and use those. And so they put together a film festival, and teachers had a fun topic. They went out and created this video, edited it, popped the link into Canvas, and it was done. And it modeled it for the teachers how to do that. Very intentional. Choice of sessions. Talk a lot about student choice and voice with the SC student standards. Boom, it's right there. Sharing and evaluating. Reflect on that. Of course, lunch is always the most important and then more team choices in the afternoon. So what you saw them sitting at the table working on was, act working on was actually this one. Um, <laughs> Hyperdocs, which is kind of new. Uh, Canvas, of course, was in there. How to break out EDU. Anybody, anybody here done a breakout EDU? <laughs> okay. uh, a building had purchased some of those and they were sharing it with the whole district and so they did this so that teachers would know how to use it so they're modeling it. Um, engaging students using Skype. And then down here, we also had a couple that weren't tech, techy at all. Um, cultivating a love of reading. That one of, and this is all teacher-led, all teacher-centered and all teacher-led. Uh, engage uh, students with the video, and that was a continuation of that morning part to this, and the math, and then sketch notes. And so there were a lot of choices. Oh, and I need to mention the STEAM room with WMS Tech Aids, that's Windsor Middle School, by the way. Um, that was student-led. They had students that, had, that were familiar with Tinkercad and 3D printing and other things in makerspaces, and so teachers could go down and see how that worked and be taught how to do that. That wasn't just at the building level. We uh, 
did that at the district level too. So here's kind of the, some of the intentional activities that some of the schools have done. We talked about the film festival, a coffee EDU to help build team and, and the school building, just get out of the school building. And so they modeled kind of that idea of making it an informal conversation. And after one hour, you're done. How many of you are familiar with a coffee EDU? It's a real informal, relaxed way. You go, at, you start at 7 a.m. and then the PD day starts at 8. But they go there for that first hour and then they, they head over to the school building. And that was very successful. It got a lot of staff going, wow, this is a nice way to just talk with my colleagues that I don't get to talk with all the time. Uh, breakout, and that, that occurred once a month then after that for that particular building. They liked it. Uh, breakout EDU, I showed you, and the Eclipse Ball was uh, the PE teacher had invented a new game and wanted to share it with staff so that staff would. And, and that's a physical activity. It's another great way in intentionally team building with your staff. Um, Student-led PD, there's uh, the students that did that PD. When I, I was in the building and I saw that, I was like, oh, can you come do this at a district level, like an ed camp? And he was like, sure. <laughs> and he sat down and, oh my gosh, this guy was just fantastic in working with teachers and teachers learned a lot from it. And so next year our goal is to continue modeling that and getting that out there with the students. The end of the year survey for that particular building that I was showing you marked 96% effective or highly effective overall on professional development. I don't think that would have occurred the year previous. It was a lot of change and there were a lot of teachers that were skeptical um, and that's the challenge, is getting them to kind of just, but once they start to experience that and they're like, this didn't, this didn't seem like professional development. It seemed like me just going after what I wanted to learn and maybe investigate. We also, at that building level on our bridge, for the uh, coaches can do one-to-one -one sessions, they get a point. Uh, peer support, just colleagues working with one another, developing an innovative lesson plan, using tech integration, one point. And then we have a showcase at the end of, end of the year for innovative student projects. It goes along with, all of this goes with our vision. That's a little more time intensive, so that's three points uh, for that. So I just wanted to show you that, that portion of this. Um, and then our building administration, as you saw, the work was taken out of their hands. This is teacher driven now, teacher led. They still put the stamp of approval on all that. In fact, the, the, our teachers come back about four days before school starts and do trainings and work days and everything. Um, and that's already all mapped out. That was mapped out at the end of last year. The principals didn't have to figure that out. It's already done and approved and ready to roll. But Sheila and I also put together this professional development menu for principals if they want. For any time, we try, and there's two pages to it. It, it folds very nicely uh, into a brochure-looking menu. Um, but they can choose a half hour if they want at a staff meeting when they're, when they're flipping it and have time if they need something addressed. Maybe it has to do with data privacy. Um, maybe it has to do with social media. Um, maybe um, we want, there's, there's a lot of confusion around um, Gmail, something in Gmail is weird or something. We can go in and we can fix that and take care of that. It can be a full day if they need it. So all these are, are things that could be scalable. And that's it. And I tried to leave some, some time for uh, questions. Yes? So on that menu, was that something that you guys would then fulfill, or was that, or those courses that the admin would take themselves? Yeah. Uh, so he asked on this menu, is that something that we would do, Sheila and I, or the tech director, or is this something that um, teachers or, or even building coaches could probably do? Um, I think it, it's flexible. It's up to the principal. They, you're, that's good point. I hadn't thought of that. They might look at this and say, you know what? My building coach could do that. And this is, this is, I've had a few teachers come to me asking about this, and they had already sent out the survey for planning to professional development. Boom. 
they could have them do 30 minutes of that, or ask Sheila and I. And the other thing I want to mention on that, that bridge is that all of this, when, when they do that building level PD, they always bring a district person in. They always ask us, can, can you come and, and step in for, for this hour and do a little something so that teachers see it models, that they see all that's connected. It's not just a building doing it. It's not just a district doing it. It's all of us working together. Yeah. We have multiple courses. We have standalone courses, and then we have that badging yeah. course that I showed you. Um, the standalones have, yeah, they're all housed separately. Uh, some of the buildings have like their own individual type of trainings that they, they do, and they'll put those in individually. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, um, that is definitely a balancing act. Um, he asked if uh, the, the building vision and the district vision meshed and how, how do they address that. Yeah, they, they've tried to split it and do both. That's a very good point. Um, but they're all pretty similar uh, in how they, they work. And that could be something that uh, bubbles up in Stratop too is do the building Hopefully they are. Do the building's <laughs> visions go uh, well with the uh, district vision? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Two questions. First about the, um, the shell that you have, which I don't have the question about. Does that uh, do you manually add people to it, or is it like an open course and so you ask and you always have to? Yeah. OK, so she asked in, in that, um, like the badging shell, or, uh, do we add people to that? Or, or are they self-enrolling, or how are we doing that? Um, we've fiddled with self-enrolling on, on some of that. Um, teachers don't always get there. A lot of times they just email us and say, can, can you put me in there? I want to I wanna do something. So we've done a little of both. I should say there hasn't really been one, one way. Our, for our students, it synchronizes with our SIS, uh, which, which is Infinite Campus, yeah. And that's all, that's all taken care of. Um, but we manually create the courses. Our, our technology people put those into containers, they call them. We have different, like, building containers. We have professional development containers. They'll put those in those folders. They'll give us the opportunity to add students in then. They took away the opportunity to add any students across the board in our district because uh, they didn't want teachers creating, like, their own course and putting students in. They wanted it to not have an issue with that synchronization with uh, our SIS. Well, they, they tried to create a heterogeneous group, so they set those up intentionally, the groups of teachers that would work on those videos. They had a plant that was a teacher that knew how to, to do it. The goal would be that they didn't do it, though. They worked with the other teachers in getting them to do all of it, the, the, you know, the, the filming, the editing, the actual trying to submit that to Canvas. Some of them used the Canvas video within it. That was their way of doing it. Some of them used the Screencastify and did a Screencastify method, and then some of them used their phones. Of what? Was it just a random topic? They had topics, yeah. I couldn't tell you what. They had a whole sheet that they could choose from, and they just pick or come up with their own topic uh, that they wanted to do. Uh, I think the funniest one that I saw that day, have you guys seen the uh, principal? I forget his name, but he, he's from the south somewhere, and he does that uh, with the the smelling of markers and burnt popcorn and all that, you guys? I forget his exact name, but they did a, a, a spin of something like that on there. And it was, it was we, they had a popcorn machine, they sat and ate, and they just enjoyed watching each other's videos, and they were all laughing. And, but it was a great way for them to kind of develop the skills and say, I can do it. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, thank you. If you, if you do, don't, you know, just contact me. Thank you. Thank you.